this is Trey. I'm going to show you how I made this 80 days, 8,000 photos video. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll have a link to the full thing, but this is a little bit of it. Um, it uh, was an idea that I had while I was on this trip, and I didn't know if it would work out. And I came back and edited this together and made a few mistakes and, and uh, reviewed it a little bit, and then... Uh, figured out how to make some things better and went back and reworked and reworked it and, and I ended up coming up with a um, solution that I thought uh, worked pretty well and uh, this is cer something certainly anybody can do um, and uh, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, um, so let me stop this thing. Alright, um, so here's how it works. Uh, okay, um, you know, I'm just, I haven't really ever explained this, so I might uh, um, go a little slow in some parts for you or fast in others. I apologize. So this is Adobe Lightroom. Um, it's what I use to manage all my photos. Um, you see I have 126,000 photos in here. Um, I have 41,000 unprocessed photos. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about how I organize my photos. I have a little um, ebook on that, on uh, digital workflow. Uh, but you'll get a little hint of it here actually. So what I did is after this trip um, I ended up with about um, I don't know 9,000 photos and I went through and I picked out my best um, 5,000 and I dropped them into this collection here okay so this is a collection uh, of my trip uh, of my favorite photos okay and since I only post one photo a day on the blog, I thought, wow, you know, it's going to take forever to show all these favorite photos. Why not mash them up into something fun? So that's what this is. Uh, that was the um, sort of original idea. Now, as you look through here, you'll see that I have some pictures that are just sort of like these single pictures of interesting things or uh, uh, things I thought were um, kind of cool. Um, and then on occasion, I have uh, sequences of photos. Like for example, when I was going down into the London tube, um, I would take one every few seconds. And then later when you see this um, in the video, they kind of, it almost looks like a little video uh, within the series of pictures. Um, and so there's a good mix here in between single shots and sort of sequences of shots. Um, and a lot of things, you know, just get lost, um, you know, things like this. They just get lost in the fray. Sometimes I would see interesting things like this, and I would use a shallow depth of field on my 50 millimeter 1.4, and then I would get closer to it and kind of spiral around it to give a sense of 3D-ness, and then end the sequence on one of the most um, interesting bits of it. Um, you know, like there, for example. Um, and then I would start shooting randomly, and it's all in chronological order. I think that's kind of, uh, kind of important. Uh, here's an idea that I thought would be good, but didn't really work out. If you watch the video, it just comes out kind of strange. There's this whole sequence of um, uh, these um, wrought iron fences. And I thought that going down through them and taking photos would come out kind of interesting. But something about the, the um, staccato nature of them didn't really work out in the, in the video. Um, other things that I didn't think would work out uh, did work out. Um, like when I got uh, back on the tube a second time, there was this kind of uh, cute gal, and uh, she turned slowly, and then she saw me and smiled. So this is just a sequence of four photos, and maybe you remember it from the video, maybe you don't. But what's kind of interesting in a few ways is that this third one is totally out of focus, uh, but she's kind of spinning and about to look at me. But you don't really remember the out of focus one, and it kind of uh, is different and unexpected in a way, I think. I, I don't know. So you'd expect that everything has to be perfectly in focus, but it doesn't really have to be. Um, so anyway, that's just some of the some of the photos uh, I took in and around the museums. Um, let's go down here. You can look at some of the more component parts. Um, this was this uh, cool chocolate store. Um, I go to chocolate stores in every uh, country I visit. So here we have a lot of London. Let me scroll down and see. Oops, let me scroll down here and see what else we have. Um, here we are in uh, in France. 
Um, you know, sometimes you see um, cute kids or whatever, and then you can just take a few shots of them and kind of put them together. And uh, they look kind of nice together. Um, you know, especially if you have a bunch of shots you're kind of proud of, but you're just not sure what to do with them. Here's um, Fabian. Uh, this is um, Fabian Baral. He designed um, StuckInCustoms.com. He's the great French graphic designer, very famous, and uh, we've gotten to be friends. We share a love of uh, graphic design and um, French chocolate. Uh, but he's already French, so he just calls it chocolate. Um, doo -doo -doo. This is, uh, I think this is down in Spain. Um, there was a nice uh, market there with all kinds of colorful fruit. And, you know, you're in these target-rich environments, and you can't help but just take a, uh, a ton of photos of all this interesting stuff. Um, so, of course, you grab it all, and then what do you do with it? Um, I don't know. Um, so that's some more of uh, Spain. And every now and then you get, um, like, even though this was just a single picture, maybe you remember this. Um, uh, when I watch the video, it's hard to be objective about it, but in a way, uh, so we have, like, street scene, street scene, street scene, and then person. And then, um, you know, um, a lot of scenes of... Um, no people, right? This is our uh, room in Ibiza. And uh, for whatever reason, um, this face just kind of jumped out at me in, in, while watching the video. Um, do, do, do. Uh, keep going. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't actually, I wish now that I had gotten more uh, like uh, plane footage, um, you know, because the plane is sort of a nice uh, transition between um, places kind of gets gives the idea of uh, traveling um, you know one thing I did actually on the plane from Spain to China is I was working on this photo uh, that you might remember um, that's what I do when I'm sitting there on the plane as I, I work on this stuff um, and then um, so here's China um, all kinds of little interesting bits and pieces um, I got this guy painting the bridge. I thought that was nice and colorful, and I got a few sequences of him, and you might remember that. Um, okay, well, I won't go through it all. You get the idea, okay? You get the idea. So, how do you do it? Okay, well, first let me show you how I did it, some mistakes I made, and then uh, how I fixed it. Um, come on, Lightroom. Sometimes it um, slows down a little bit for no reason. So basically, I would hit uh, you know Apple A or Control A and select everything, and then I would go to um, Export. Uh, I would go to File, um, Export, and then um, I would export all of them to a particular folder, um, and I would give them a, a, a sequence number. Um, which I think you can do um, custom name X of Y, yeah. And then you would have a starting number, so they would be sequenced according to date, and they would all have a different number at the end of them, okay? Um, and then uh, what you do is you have this program called uh, QuickTime Player 7. So it's kind of confusing. I know you've heard of QuickTime, but there's actually a lot of different QuickTimes out there. This one does something special. Um, my menu bar is off the screen, I'm sorry, but uh, what you can do is you, you go to File, Open Image Sequence, and then you get a, a dialog like this, right? And I'll go pick, uh, doo -doo -doo, um, like my kids folder, for example. Um, let's say that this was the full sequence. And you would select a whole bunch of photos. You just select the first one, I'm sorry, you just select the first one in the sequence, and you say Open, and then you get this new dialog Right, it says the frame rate. So what it will do is it will take all of your photos and um, put them into a movie file, okay? And you get to pick the rate at which it happens. So first I tried 15 frames per second, but that felt a little fast. I finally arrived on 12 frames per second, um, which is fast. I mean, I think everyone agrees that it's fast, but kind of in a nice way, 
Um, obviously, you can't see every single photo. People always say, well, I want to see a photo for a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm sure, but it's, um, it's uh, and I do too, but it kind of defeats the purpose. You don't want the whole thing to take 30 minutes. Um, anyway, so 12 seems to be fast, but not so lightning fast that you can't even process the image at all. Okay, so then you click OK, and it will create a movie file for you, which I later um, will show you what I did with, okay? But first, let me just tell you a mistake I made. Is So the mistake I made is I used all these photos, I did 15 frames per second, and it was just too fast. So and I was trying to squeeze this into about a six minute um, song, all right? And uh, uh, you'll notice, remember it was called 8,000 uh, photos. Well, it's not really 8,000 photos. My first take was 5,000. And that was too many, so then I pared it down to about 3,800, okay? So that's how many photos are in the final thing. Um, and so what I was able to do is, you know, it's always a hard choice, but I had to go through and delete 1,000 of my least favorite photos from the previous one that I ended up with this, okay? Um, which kind of turned out pretty well, actually. Probably not a bad idea to pare down. So anyway, you can comfortably fit about 3,500 photos into a six minute video. All right, so I did the same thing as before. I exported all of them. I used QuickTime Player 7 to make a movie file out of them. And then I imported that movie file into iMovie, okay? You can use Final Cut Pro or whatever, but this was uh, simple and fast. Um, so let me show you what's happening here. Um, you know, this is uh, pretty far down the road uh, in the editing. I'm not going to start from scratch and redo it. I'll just show you what it looks like. So here we have this little 3.3 um, uh, second opening um, that I always use. Um, and then uh, it fades to a, a plain version of this. And then I made this in Photoshop. It fades out and goes back to a black version. Okay. Then we have this cool map thing. And uh, people always think I did something really fancy there, but it's actually incredibly simple. If you have the new iPhoto, um, like for example, this one, Burning Man to England, you can actually open this up and say, uh, what is it, clip adjustments? Yeah. Um, you get to pick the uh, effect and then the starting location and the ending location. I mean, how many seconds that transition should be. Um, and then it does it for you. Now, sometimes too, if you notice that, like see this is 0.5 seconds, but this one is 0.2 seconds. Uh, because it was such a short distance, it would take too long, half a second is too long to draw that out. Um, so I just wanted this sequence to get over pretty quick. I didn't need to have this super long drawn out uh, deal. Okay, so then it fades to black. And then I show this image, because these are the glasses I wore all through Burning Man. And this is me kind of putting them on and this is what the world looks like through them. And this is how I process most of my photos at Burning Man um, with sort of this look, because um, that's how I saw everything. Uh, now for each of these photos, these are not part of the movie sequence that you saw before. These are just individually dragged in by using the, the photo thing right here, okay? Uh, so those are all individually brought in. And then I end with a few of my color shots that I really liked. And um, then we get into the movie, okay? Now, you'll notice that this is a 6.6 .6 second segment of the movie. And it's being played at 12, see that little 12 right there? That means 12 frames per second. So as I move across here, you'll see this is probably about uh, 80 or 90 photos, okay? And on occasion, what I would do is if I have a shot that I really like, like this one that I processed, I will take it and I will drop it in the middle and show it for 0.2 seconds. Okay, so that stays up there for a little bit longer. These are up there for about 0.1 seconds each. Okay, then we go back to one of these sequences and then I show one of my favorite shots and then a sequence and then one of my process shots and then a sequence and one of my process shots. Okay, see how that's, see how that's working? Um, and then other times I would not show a process shot but I would uh, like let's say, for example, there was a section down here in um, in France, where was it? Doo -doo. Where, um, uh, where 
is it? I was walking along and then I found this cool little, um, uh, oh yeah, it's right here. Okay. So, um, so oh, this is all kind of fast, right? And then it slows down right here. Um, if you remember this, it shows these a little bit slower because I, I kind of, I liked all these pictures. This was a neat little market we were in and I kind of liked the way, um, these little pictures were and I felt like it was too fast at normal speed so I did slow this down a bit if you go to um, clip adjustments I think that's where we go um, yeah you can see that I set the speed to 50% so even though it's playing back at 12 frames per second when I set this at 50% it plays back at 6 frames per second does that make sense um, other things I would double um, but most stuff I just left the same Okay, so we just did this kind of again and again and again, over and throughout. Um, girl playing hacky sack in Beijing. Cute girl with um, devil horns. Uh, so on and so forth. So they just kind of went on and on and on. It was a little bit of a Sisyphusian effort, as you can see. Um, And then we get to New Zealand, um, got this uh, um, strange art exhibit. Um, then we kind of end with some of my favorite shots of New Zealand. And then um, it fades out. Um, thank everyone I met and that helped me out. And then we go to this little final thing. Um, so as far as uh, timing out the song and everything, uh, what I did, of course, was I kind of had a different song here in the beginning, sort of this, um, uh, this you know, this sort of sound. Um, and then I kind of wanted to make a surprising sound because uh, you're expecting sort of a slow photo sequence here. Um, but then when it gets to the new area, I wanted it to be really quick and rapid and that's why we kind of chose this music. And then, um, at various times throughout here, the music would go faster or slower. And then I would find those times and I would speed up or slow down um, the, the image sequence that happened to be there. All right. And that's basically what I did. And then uh, um, I saved it off as a movie file and uploaded to YouTube and Vimeo. And uh, that's how it worked. All right, well, uh, um, if you have any more questions or ideas, um, just leave me a comment. I'd uh, be interested to see what you think. And I'll probably do this a few more times and maybe discover some more things and share them back with you. All right, thank you. Bye.